Problem G is one of the complex problems in this uh, problem set. However, it was solved by some team even, even in the first hour and pl plenty of teams are following on that. So it's one of uh, popular hard problems. Uh, the problem statement is about uh, some names of uh, ladies in the royal family that append uh, one letter to the beginning of uh, the name of their mother to make their own name. And uh, the question is, you have this structure of ancestry in form of a tree, you need to find uh, for some patterns number of names that have this pattern as a prefix. Uh, we will talk about two possible solutions for this problem. I'll start with one and my colleague will then fill in the second one. So for this first solution, what we start with is we can actually represent all of the names of the queens as a tri. So this is a tree where each vertex holds a letter. So these are the blue things in this picture. And each of the letters is pointing towards the shorter names. So wherever you, can, you start in this tree, if you follow the arrows, you can read the name of one of the queens. So it's Daenerys this way, it's Rhys this way, and so on. And you can notice that I added a special queen with an empty name here at the very end. Now, uh, for this solution, the basic technique is sometimes called binary lifting. And the general idea is that if we know that in two to the k steps you can get from A to B, and in two to the k steps you can get from B to C, then in two to k plus one steps you can get from A to C. This is a technique commonly used in the design of algorithms, for example, when you are building the suffix array. And now in our solution, we are going to do something very similar. So the thing that we are trying to do is we are going to actually sort all of the queen's names according to the alphabet. But we cannot use a standard sorting algorithm because uh, it would be too slow. We have to come up with something more clever. And the algorithm it will be precisely using this property that whenever you have a name of a queen and you move towards the right in this tree, you will get the name of another queen. So what we will do, be doing is, first we will sort the names of the queens just according to the first letter. This is really easy because we can look at the first letter and these are the red numbers in my figure. So the letter A is the er earliest in the alphabet, so it will get uh, index zero, D will get index one and so on. So the red numbers in the current picture represent the order of the queen's names just according to the first letter of their name. But now we want to double the size of this sorted prefix in each iteration. So whenever we have a situation like this, that we have the names of the queens sorted according to the first two to the k letters of their name, here's what we can do. We know For each of the queens, we know the current order of her name, and we can look somewhere to the right in the tree and read the current order of the, of the suffix of her name. So this is the same property as for suffix arrays. The suffix of a suffix is again a suffix. Here the suffix of a queen's name is another queen's name. And for that queen, we also know her order. So right now in the beginning, the second phase would look like this. So the queen Raris is starting with an R, which is fourth, and then is continuing with an E, which is second. The queen Ryanaris is starting also with an R, but that one is followed by a Y. So in this way, we can, in each iteration, in linear or in a log in time, sort the names of the queens again by considering such ordered tuples, and in n log n or n, squ n log squared of n time, we will get a sorted list of queens. And once we have this, the rest of the task is really easy. So for each query, when we get a prefix, we can just use a fairly standard binary search and we don't actually need to do anything clever. When we are comparing the prefix to a name of a queen, we can just go one character at a time. This will add a logarithmic factor. So if the query had length L, we need L times log n time, but this is also clearly well within the time limit. So this is the entire solution. Somewhat different approach uh, to this problem, uh, maybe based on the Ahokarasic algorithm. Uh, what we do, we um, reverse the patterns that we will be matching 
and then we make a classic um, tree out of that. Uh, it will contain some suffix links. Uh, in the uh, sample that we have in problem statements, those will be trivial because uh, no pattern has uh, any common suffix with uh, uh, that is a prefix of another one. However, in general case, there will be some. Uh, what we do then is we convert this tree into a finite state uh, machine uh, by adding links to uh, letters that don't have outgoing edge from given node. As example, if we have a node where we have outgoing edges with A, B, and C, and suffix link from that node goes into a vertex that has uh, B and D as outgoing edges, then we may create extra edge from the first one uh, using letter D to the one where uh, letter D goes to in the second one. So this will create a state machine that has uh, n vertices and uh, n times 26, which is size of alphabet, edges at most. What we do next, we apply this finite state machine to the uh, try which is already given to us uh, explicitly in the input, we get, uh, we store which state uh, of this finite state machine uh, correspond to every node in the try, and then we just find uh, how often each state occurred. From every state, we know which uh, patterns correspond to it, and with a simple uh, BFS on the Ahukarasic tree, we can actually restore the answer. So I think that the first solutions for this problem were actually the Ahukarasic ones. The other ones that are uh, submitted more towards the end of second hour already used different approaches, including the one that you've described. Maybe some of the problems uh, that uh, teams encounter while implementing this, maybe that when, when they uh, try to write a purely hash-based solution, they may get a uh, time limit, just because uh, it's not efficient enough when strings have uh, various lengths. Uh, but other from that, I would expect that every strong team should solve it.